we are going to start on the back. So just starting to find a comfortable space on the mat. Taking a couple moments to just come into the breath. Allowing inhales and exhales to lengthen. Allowing that breath to slow. And as you move into that breath, maybe you make a mental note to try to stay a little extra focused on it for this practice. Maybe you set an intention or choose a mantra just to give yourself a place to focus when the mind tries to wander. And with that next breath, we're just going to draw the right knee up and in, pulling it towards the outside of the rib cage into your wind removing pose. Maybe you roll the ankles out, maybe you're just feeling more static at the moment. With that next breath, we're just going to extend that foot towards the ceiling. You might have a little bend in the knee. You might be ready for the leg to be straight. You might continue rolling that ankle out, making sure that you, if you are rolling it, that you're rolling in both directions. And in that next breath, we're just going to release the arms out into a T. And then as you exhale, the left leg's going to lift, the right leg lowers. Doesn't quite touch. And we're going to move through eight more little kicks. So take it up. One, two, three. Couple low one for six, seven, and eight. After the eight one, we'll take both feet back towards the ceiling, draw the knees into the chest, take a second to maybe circle both knees, rock the low back, just releasing anything that might have arisen. And then the grip's gonna switch on over towards the left knee. The right leg will extend. That left knee is going to point more towards the shoulder to really get into your wind or moving posture. With that next breath, we're just going to extend that leg up towards the ceiling. Starting to move into the hamstring or the ankle in whatever way is most comfortable for you. And in that next breath, we're going to take the arms back out into goalpost arms. The right leg is going to come meet the left leg. We're going to flex those toes in towards the face and move through eight leg lifts. The slower you move, the more you're going to feel your core really kind of start to squeeze and shake a little. Maybe you don't want to work that hard today, so you move a little faster, allowing momentum to aid you. Keeping that breath in mind as the heels lower. And lift. Exhaling to release for three. Four, halfway there. Five. Six. Seven. 
And then last one, eight. After eight, we're going to take those heels up. We're going to rock the hips back and over and just take a quick second and plow, getting a really deep release all through the back. And then roll all the way up over the knees into your tabletop. So you're getting a full body roll in there too. And then starting to move through your cat and your cow. You want to do some hip circles, incorporate some movement here, whatever is working for you. Whatever helps warm you up for your flow. With that next breath, we're going to come back to our neutral tabletop spine. You're going to take that right leg straight out back. When you're ready, the left arm lifts. And we're just going to take a moment in balance, starting to really engage that deep center line. And then as you exhale, that left hand's going to lower. The right foot's gonna come and step in between the hands. And as you inhale, you're gonna come up into a supported crescent or warrior one. You wanna take the fingers back a little bit deeper to really get into the back and get a back bend. Feel free to do so. And then from here, hands are gonna come into heart center. The left elbows, and it comes to the outside of the right knee. Maybe you keep those hands in prayer. Maybe having the support of the mat allows you to open a little bit deeper and open the arms. In that fifth breath, we're gonna come back towards center, releasing our twist. We'll go ahead and bring the hands to the inside of the right foot. I personally had to heel toe my right foot out just a little bit to make some space. Maybe you wiggle and find some movement here. And then we'll take whatever variation of a lizard feels good for you. You might come down to the forearms. You might pull forward through this right knee to really release the front of the left hip. And in that fifth breath, we're just gonna plug those back toes in. The core is nice and warm, so we're gonna try to keep the hips at planks level. And then take that right foot back. Nice, nice control. We're gonna hold it for five breaths. And as you exhale, just come on down to your tabletop. Move through some cat and cow, whatever release you need here. Maybe you push back to a child's pose. Just taking that moment to freestyle because we're going to get into your left side in a moment here. And then whenever you're ready, that left leg is coming up and out. Right arm reaches this time as we find that moment of balancing in your stick posture. And then as you exhale, it comes to the mat. Left leg swings forward as you find your warrior one variation here. Maybe again, you're pulling forward through that knee. Maybe you're grabbing a little bit of a back bend. Maybe it's just really nice to reach towards the sky and feel some length through the obliques. And the hands are going to come into heart center. We're going to grab our twist. And it's, the twist might look different on this side than it did on the other side. That is totally fine. And then as you exhale, we're going to come to center. 
that left foot might need to heel toe out just a little bit as you take a moment to rock back and forth, find some movement before you find whatever variation of a lizard is gonna help you start to feel like you're opening through those hips. Nice. So we're gonna come back up onto the hands, planting those hands tucking the back toes and trying to make that strong transition back to plank. Try not to let those hips go higher or lower as you step back. Nice. And then exhaling, you're just gonna press up and back into your down dog. Finding again, whatever movement you need to here. This is our first time to pass through this space today. And as you exhale, we're just going to find a way to get the feet towards the hands. So maybe that looks like a step. Maybe you're walking. Maybe you're hopping. Inhaling into your flat back. And then as you exhale, just finding a forward fold that feels nice right now. Again, we will find plenty of forward folds throughout the practice. So there's no need to try to find if you're just feeling kind of tight this morning. And as you inhale, arms are going to come up overhead. Exhale, hands come into heart center. We're going to start to move through some sun A. So the arms are taking it up. Exhaling into your fold. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling to move through your plank and chaturanga. Inhaling into your up dog or cobra. Exhaling back to down dog. You've got some time here to play or be still. And with that next breath and whatever method you like, we're gonna take it towards the top of your mat. Find that flat back. Exhale into your fold. Arms are coming up overhead. Exhale, hands are coming in. We're gonna find two more traditional A's before we start to flow. So moving it with your breath. Maybe your breath is a little faster. Maybe it's a little slower. Finding a flat back moving through your vinyasa. And maybe your vinyasa's got a couple chaturangas in it. Maybe it's got one. Maybe it's an up dog, maybe it's a cobra, whatever is working for you. And then when you're ready, we're just coming back towards the top of your mat. Finding a flat back, moving into your fold, taking the arms up overhead, hands coming into our center. Last traditional A, we're gonna take the arms up, move towards your mat, find your flat back, and then move through your plank and chaturanga into your back bend of choice and then on back to down dog. And in that fifth breath, we're just going to take the right leg up, circle it around, bend the knee, find some movement here. And then you're just going to step the right foot in between the hands. 
the back heel drops in towards the midline of your body and we're coming up to square the shoulders, square the hips, find your warrior one. From your warrior one, we're gonna open out, finding a warrior two. You're gonna straighten that front knee, pull forward through the fingertips, hinge down into your triangle. Maybe you can take the gaze up towards the ceiling. And that fifth breath is gonna come all the way up and over into the sky archer. From your sky archer, you're going to come out wide. The front toes are going to flip in. The hands are going to clasp behind your back. Inhaling for a leap. Exhaling to fold into a wide leg forward fold. So from here, pressing through those feet, inhaling to lift. We're gonna keep the arms behind the back, but we're gonna release that grip, coming to opposite elbows and or your reverse prayer. There we go. We're gonna bring those legs in so they're about hip, they're about one leg distance apart. And then you're gonna flip both sets of toes towards the back of your mat. So we're gonna end up circling back to the top, but we're gonna, the pyramid is going towards the back of your mat. So we're starting to think about pulling that right hip forward so the hips are squaring. Inhaling for your leap. Exhaling as you fold. Inhaling, we're going to come on back up. We're going to take the arms out wide. We're going to start to pivot that, the, your, it's your right foot. So it's this one that's back towards the top of your mat. So you're coming back out towards that triangle idea, but the left hand, we're going to take a revolve triangle to the back of your mat. So the right hand, so you the outside of that left foot. And then from here, we're gonna put a bend in that front knee. We're gonna pivot onto the knife blade edge of your right foot, the one that's at the top of our mat. And then you're gonna press it back, find your side plank. Nice. From side plank, we'll go ahead and lower to a plank so you're at the back of your mat. You're going to press up to your down dog. Take that second to pedal out the heels. And we all know these postures that we're going through. So we're going to take the left leg up this time. We're going to let it step in between the hands. Back heel drops in and you're taking that warrior one towards the back of your mat. You gotta, I know it feels a little wonky, is going to help us get back towards the front. Opening out into your warrior two. Here we're going to straighten that leg. Pull forward through the fingertips. And John over into your triangle. Maybe the hand comes to the mat. Maybe it's stopping somewhere on the leg. Maybe it feels better to circle that arm today than to hold it straight. I 
And then you're coming all the way up and back, finding that sky archer. From Sky Archer, we're just going to come long, flip the left toes back towards the wide edge, uh, wide side of your mat. And then from here, we've already gone through one wide leg forward fold. So if you want to have the arms back like that, you can. If you prefer a different wide leg forward fold, if you like a tripod, if you like a crow, please feel free to play here. And as you inhale, we start to make our way back up. And there's no need to rush. We're going to take some breaths to heel toe those legs in together. If you like the opposite elbows or reverse prayer, we're heading towards our pyramid, in which case we're going to just bend both sets of toes back up towards the front of our mat. Somehow or another, when I did this this morning, we did a whole circle instead of semicircle, but that's okay. Still back at the top, inhaling for some weight. Exhaling as you fold. And as you inhale, pressing through that foot, really trying to roll up. For me, it kind of helps to open back out to like a warrior two stance before I move into my revolve triangle twist for that left hand, so just going to come to the outside of that right foot. If you feel really tight, you can bend that front knee and come onto the back toes. That might throw your balance a little, but it does make it slightly more accessible. And from our revolve triangle, we're transitioning to our side plank. So, for me, it's easier to bring the left hand to the inside of that foot, then pivot onto the back foot to get a fluid motion. Nice. After our fifth breath, we're just going to come towards center and move through vinyasa. Taking it back up to your down dog. Five breaths here. So again, using them in whatever way feels good today. Maybe a down dog doesn't feel good at all. You prefer to take a child's pose. Then you're going to take that right leg up once more. We're going to tap it to the back of the right elbow. Dip down to the wrist, come over to the left wrist, left elbow, back up to your three-pointed. And we're just going to step that foot through, that heel drops in, and you're going to find your warrior two. From that warrior two, we're gonna pull forward through those fingertips. Let the forearms settle on top of that right leg. Start reaching forward. Maybe you stay here in your side angle. Maybe you drop all the way to the inside of that leg. Nice. Awesome. So because everyone's nice and open and I see some strong cores, feel free to take your bind or your bird of paradise. If you want to kind of hold like a beach ball out there in space while trying to keep the ribs knitted in, that's another great use of five more breaths. Nice, I like all the variations, that's awesome. And after you get five breaths and or have played enough, we'll meet in reverse. So we're going to spend several extra breaths in reverse so that none of the birds have to hurry there. Nice. And 
And then from our reverse, we're just gonna come back out wide to your warrior two. Let the left hand cartwheel to the inside of that right foot. You're gonna pivot onto the back toes. Right arm starts to lift as you find a twist. And in that next breath, you're just going to bring the right hand down, let it frame the foot. We're going to drop that back knee, press back into your half splits. In that next breath, we're going to rock back forward onto the foot. We're going to go ahead and tuck the toes just so that we've got that little bit of buoyancy. Maybe you kind of find your bounce there. The right hand is coming in front of and slightly diagonal to the right foot, so lining up kind of catty corner to that pinky toe. You're gonna to find that bounce as so you start to hop up and then open out into your half moon. In your fifth breath, we're just going to release the left side towards the mat. Inhale into your flat back. Exhale nice and deep into your fold. And then once again, we'll find that flat back. Exhale into your fold and start to move through your vinyasa. So plank and chaturanga. Up dog cobra. Back to down dog. Left leg lifts. Take that moment to find some movement. Open the hip. And then you're going to take it to the back of the left elbow. Nice left wrist. Draw a line on over to the right wrist. Come up to the elbow. Take it back to your three-pointed, and then step through. Let the back heel drop in and find that warrior two. Then you're gonna start to find your side angle. So we've got about 10 breaths that we were playing with here. So you have plenty of time to warm into the posture and then to play with whatever variation you want. In those next couple breaths, we'll start transitioning back into our reverse. But we also spent about 10 breaths in reverse, so you don't have to rush into that transition. Nice. And as we exhale, we're going to cartwheel those hands down, pivot onto the right toes. Enjoy that twist towards the left. And with your next exhale, we're going to start to find our, our half split. So the back knee drops. Kicking back, folding over the left leg. And then we're just going to rock back forward and set up to move into that half moon. So maybe you go ahead and plug the toes in and find some bounce. Maybe you want to spend some time making sure you've got that left hand in a nice diagonal so that you can have your support. And then we're going to come up and open. In your fifth breath, 
We'll clasp on down. Shake out your forward fold. Maybe you find, maybe you need some wiggles. And as you inhale, arms are going to come up overhead. As you exhale, the right arm's going to swing underneath the left, wrapping at the wrist, going at the elbows, maybe again at the wrist. From here, you're going to sit down into your chair. And when you're ready, you're going to take it into an eagle. So that right leg's going to come over. It might kickstand next to the foot. It might lie in the leg. You might wrap again at the ankle. And when you find your eagle, you're going to try to sit down. Pull those elbows down. Pull the crown of your head up. Next breath, we're going to straighten through the left leg. Bring the right knee up into your high knee. We're going to keep our eagle arms and see if we can't find warrior three. Nice. Your next exhale, you're going to try to land with a crescent foot, so on those toes. You're going to lift up and out, and then start to find five breaths here. Sorry, one second. Hey. Is there any chance I've got about 30 minutes left in this yoga class and we can start on full side? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Sorry, the pest control lady was coming. So we're in that warrior two. She got here a little early. We're in that crescent. Right, looks like the right knee's forward. And from here, we're just going to come on down, find your plank. We're going to do a little bit of work in plank before we get your left side. So we already drew those boxes with our knee. Now we're going to make X's or just tap the elbows. So right comes to left, left to right. We've been working with counts of eight, so we're going to keep going with that. Three, three, four, four, five, five, six, Six, seven, seven, eight, eight. And then we'll find our chaturanga. Move into your up dog or cobra. Take it back to down dog to pedal out the heels. With that next breath, we've got to take it back towards the hands. Inhale into your flat back. Exhale into your fold. As you inhale, arms are coming up overhead. Exhale, the left arm is swinging beneath the right. Crossing at the elbows, maybe again at the wrist. Sitting in your chair. And whenever you're ready, we're gonna start throwing that balance. The left leg's coming, crossing up and over and around. Maybe you can sit a little deeper. Maybe you can really pull those elbows down and pull back. See if we can't straighten into our staff pose or our high knee with equal arms. Nice transitions. And then from here, we're going to see if we can't find our warrior three. It's totally fine if you fall out. Maybe it is one fluid movement. And then we're going to land in our crescent. Maybe you pull those hands up, finding that back bend. When 
you're ready, we're going to take those hands on down, bring in the foot, feet meet in plank. We're going to come down onto our forearms. We're going to tap here, so starting to get into the outside of that hip. So the right foot's going to tap out, come towards center, left foot taps towards center, right, left, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. After eight, we're going to come to our knees, press on back to your child's pose. Maybe you like to tent the fingers here, maybe you like the arms to go behind. Maybe you kind of like to rock side to side. Just taking a moment here to release the back. And then from here, we're going to just roll out onto the stomach. Legs are zipping up like a cobra tail, so starting to roll in, trying to get the heels to touch. Hands come underneath the shoulders. I like to roll my shoulders down to see if they can touch the tops of my fingertips. So you're gonna start to engage those glutes. Exhale all of the air out of the lungs at the bottom. And as you inhale, start to lift into your cobra and maybe you can even hover those hands. And with that next exhale, we're going to come down. You can release the arms behind you. One ear finds the mat. Kind of pay attention to which ones. We're going to have the opportunity to rest in between each posture in our spine straightening, straightening series. So you can also kind of get that neck stretch in there too. So from here, we're going to take the chin to the mat. You're starting to look forward. Then you're going to flip those palms down. If you have shoulder or elbow issues, you'll keep the palms here. If it does not hurt, you're going to try to take the arms underneath the body in between the hip points. It just makes it almost a little bit easier to really grip into the mat. And then from here, exhaling, and as you inhale, that right leg starts to lift. When you start to feel yourself roll to the left, you found your lift into your half locus. Exhaling to lower right. Inhale to lift the left. And again, thinking about trying to keep the whole body except for that leg rounded towards the mat. So maybe you're really gripping with those fingertips to keep everything down. Maybe you're going to have to take the gaze towards the mat instead of forward. When you're ready, lowering, we're going to release those arms. Feel free to shake them out if you need to, and then we'll take the opposite ear to the mat. And then from here, that chin's coming back forward. We're gonna flip the palms down again. So maybe they stay to the outside again. Maybe they come under one more time. This time, really seeing if you can't bring the edges of the pinkies together so that they're touching, they're nice and compact down there. We're gonna start first with the legs zipped up. If they splay, it's not a big deal. But as you, and then from this time, the gaze does go down. So it's kind of like the top of your, or front of your chin's on the mat. From here, taking a moment to exhale. And then as you inhale, see if you can't lift both of those legs. So you kind of roll forward a little bit. After your fifth breath, we'll release our locust pose. 
I'm going to take the opposite ear to the elbow. Again, if you need to find any movement because your elbows don't feel great or something like that, feel free to. And so we're about to get three little back bends in. So later in the practice, we will only do one. We're going to kind of break it down like we did that locust pose, right, left, then both sides. So the right arms coming out perpendicular to your mat. You're going to start to roll over. So that left leg kicks back and over. You might stay here. This is a shoulder opener. It's already a little bit of back bend. Or you might see if you can't reach back with the left hand, grab that left foot and just kick into your half bow. And that next breath will come back towards center. Let the left arm go along. Start to roll over. Maybe you can find on that left foot, finding your, in that right foot, finding your half bow. And then from here, starting to make our way back towards center. The opposite ear finds the mat one last time. And then the feet kick up in the back. You're going to see if you can't clasp the outsides of the feet beneath the toes. Working with your breath. Different people have different philosophies on whether or not it's easier to move into this posture on an inhale or an exhale. So again, whatever you prefer for your back bends, we're going to take it up. Starting to lower, you're going to release everything. We're going to tuck those toes, bring the hands in nice and close towards the chest, really start to engage the core, drawing into the center of your body. Lifting the knees, we're going to press back up to your plank. Nice. Back to your down dog. Maybe take a second to pedal those heels out. And then we're just gonna take the right, the left hand to the right leg. So getting a quick twist in your down dog here. See if you can pull yourself beneath the right arm. And then we're gonna come back towards center. Grab that twist towards the left. And then from here, untwisting, we're going to walk out to our plank. Lower through your chaturanga. Inhale into your up dog or cobra. We're going to take it back to seated, like extended out front. From here, we're going to start first by taking the hands behind the hip with the fingertips pointed back towards the sitting bones. You're going to plant those feet. Go ahead and start rolling the shoulders out back. So you've got a little shelf for your head. As you inhale, you're going to lift into a reverse tabletop. The head drops back. When you find your reverse tabletop, we're going to do eight little leg lifts. So the right leg comes up, comes back down, left leg comes up. Two, three. Try not to let those hips start to drop. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And after eight, we'll let the hips drop. 
So let the feet come in together, rolling on forward until your body comes out to our butterfly. From here, inhaling back up. We're gonna let the feet come long. Hands come back behind you one more time. Fingertips are pointed towards the sitting bones. We're gonna keep the legs long this time. Toes start to point, inhaling at the bottom, exhaling your tape all the way up to your reverse plank. And as you exhale, lowering the hips. Inhale, arms come up overhead. Moving into a fold. Maybe you wave through the breath here a couple times before you take your hold. Maybe the knees are bent. And then we're going to make our way back up. We're going to leave this left leg long. We're going to take the right foot into the arm, kind of cradle it a little bit, maybe rocking it really deep to the left, maybe out towards the right. So we're spending some time to bring those hips up. And when you're ready, we'll set the right foot into the left hip crease. You're going to plant that left hand down on your mat. As you inhale, the right arm comes up. You're gonna go ahead and start to twist so the back of the palm is gonna end up grazing your back. You might let this arm just lie in the back. You might be able to grab the left arm. You might be able to grab the right toes. You might stay here and fold with the left arm as your support. You might be able to reach towards the left toes. Inhaling, we're gonna come on back up. And we're gonna switch our sides. So the right leg's gonna come long. Left leg comes in, and we're rocking that side to side. Rocking it side to side. We're gonna let it sit in that hip crease whenever you're ready. We'll start to plant the right hand. Left arm lifts. You're going to start to twist it as you bring it around the back. Maybe it lines the back. Maybe you grab the arm. Maybe you get the left toes. Inhaling for your leap. Exhaling into your fold. And we're going to make our way back up. We're going to let those legs come long. We're going to start to make our way onto the back. Arms are going to go ahead and come out into a T. As you exhale, the knees drop on over towards the right. We're thinking about trying to stack the knees and ground both shoulder blades. So you might use that left hand, just kind of push that left hip up. As you inhale, knees come to center. Exhale on over towards the left. And again, thinking about trying to stack the knees, ground the shoulder blades. From here, knees are going to back towards center. We're going to find a quick final back bend. I'm going to cue a bridge. If you would prefer a wheel or something different, feel free to do so. We're only going to hold it for five breaths as opposed to our usual eight. 
So the keels are close into the city zones, aligned with them. Palms are down by your side, pressed into the mat. Inhale to the bottom. Exhale to press through the heels to lift. Maybe roll the shoulders underneath you just to feel that opening through the chest. Next breath, we're still lower the hips. Palms are coming down by the side. Legs are making their way straight up. Maybe you stay here in a supported, in a, in a waterfall. Maybe you take it to a shoulder stand. Maybe you feel like a more intense inversion today. We've got 10 breaths to be upside down. Maybe you're taking a happy baby. Technically, a child's pose is an inversion. So again, just whatever your energy level and your body is calling for today. That next breath, we're going to bring the feet towards the back to the mat. So we're going to meet on the back. Just going to go ahead and figure for that right foot at the left knee, drawing the knees up and in. Maybe you clasp behind the left knee. Maybe you extend the left foot towards the ceiling, just taking a couple of breaths. In our reclined pigeons are just giving a slightly deeper. We've played with so far today. That next breath, we're going to switch. So the right foot's going to ground, left foot's going to figure four, starting to find that recline pigeon. Finding your expression inside of the posture. And then when you're ready, we're going to unfigure four, drawing into a little ball. Taking a second to rock side to side, ironing out any kinks in the low back. Maybe you want to take this um, flat back and hip opening just a little bit deeper. So you take the soles of the feet towards the ceiling and find a happy baby. And as you're ready, we're just going to let the legs come long. We're going to draw the right knee towards the shoulder, starting to finish our practice in a full circle. So finding that one knee moving posture once again. Maybe it feels a little different this time. Maybe it feels just about the same. Maybe you didn't really notice. That's how it felt at the beginning. There's no worries there either. And so we're going to switch on over towards the left. So drawing towards the outside of the rib cage, moving the body as an obstacle. And then when you're ready, we'll just bring the right leg to meet the left once again. Take a second to iron out the back. Maybe you'd like to come into a little ball. Maybe there's some other movement that you need. Maybe you want a full body stretch. But we're going to start to make our way towards that Shavasana. Try to find that moment 
rest. That moment of quiet. the last one you did today. With those next couple breaths, start to allow small movement to return to the body. Starting in fingers and toes, moving through wrist and ankles, and then eventually making your way to seated. As you inhale, the arms will come up over your head. Exhale, hands will come in at center. Thank you, ladies, for tuning in on such a dreary, gray morning. Hope everyone has an awesome afternoon. Namaste.